John M. Smith is a high school teacher in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. His testimony of finding life in Christ, his experience of new birth is quite an odyssey. It's like a story of much thoughtful, wondering, searching, not unlike the long wanderings of Odysseus in Homer's epic poem, and yet a story of several poems which mark the route of this man's search for a settled worldview of which God is both center and circumference. This is the Haven of Rest broadcast. I'm your host, Paul Evans, and I hope you'll leave your dial right where it is to hear this odyssey of John M. Smith. This odyssey begins in church. Infant baptism, confirmation at age 14, youth group, Sunday school teacher, men's league, church-related college. This is the story I want to tell you today. It sounds so programmed, so provincial, so Lancaster. Even the name sounds like it comes from the log of the Mayflower, John M. Smith. But don't be deceived. A boy and a man can do a lot of thinking and never leave Pennsylvania. And that's the way John's testimony goes. As he said, I did a lot of searching. As a teenager, I began the hobby of writing verse and poetry. Presented in progression, the verses and the poetry chart the journey of a heart searching after God, a search for an experiential relationship with Jesus Christ. My search continued, says John. My struggle intensified. Certainly, the lyricist identified with that when he wrote, I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. Now sung by the Haven of Rest Quartet. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear burdens alone. In my distress he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear Jesus, Jesus can help me. 
In his late teens, John Smith wrote, Where is there a man who does not have his conflict and strives unconsciously within himself, arguing over premeditated thoughts of just desire for self-approval, denoting first the idealistic, the good side, and then the realistic one, the evil? The question's cast. The task is now to answer, shall I live by my conscience? or my selfish wants. The scales tip, first one way and then another. Tis no medium to be found, no compromise. Will my temptations or rule my faith intended, or will I win and live for sin's destruction? My choices made, my conflicts fled. Tis a triumph in itself to have this done, for I've put all my trust in God the Father and vowed to be a servant of his son. Concerning those lines, John said, I was trying, but I wasn't getting anywhere. I may have vowed to serve Jesus, but I was still a non-spiritual person and, and as such was lost. I had no recollection of anyone ever explaining to me God's plan of salvation. I had to keep trying to live the Ten Commandments and to be a good person. Nothing good that we do This is a token of love so true All sufficient grace to help in time of need Not a step we take without His hand For by grace we receive, and by grace He will give courage and strength every day we live. How could I refuse this matchless gift divine? Give me faith to know this grace is mine. For by grace we receive, and by grace He will give courage and strength every day. Matchless gift divine Give me faith to know this grace is mine Steve Ragsdale, thank you Steve and now we continue with the Odyssey of John M. Smith, who says my next effort sometime later chronicles my continuing struggle between belonging to God and belonging to Satan. John wrote, To you I drink, but just a drop. To you I sing, but small a song. To you I talk, but just short a word. To you I fall, but not for long. But you, Satan, are not to blame for I burn me, though it is your flame. To thee I sing a song of praise, to thee I pray a prayer of love, to thee I turn when I am lost, to thee I don thy holy glove. For you, dear God, showed me the light, but I must choose 
through my short night. To me, I have but yet to turn, to search my heart for my soul's end. To me, the log of my own sins, beside the log of my amends, will judge my life. So now I pray to thank thee I have found the way. Only, John says, I hadn't found the way. I was searching, I was, I was trying, but I wasn't succeeding. Man took a beautiful thing, a relationship between himself and God, and turned it into a religion. Today there are millions of people who follow religion, but who have never met Jesus. I was going through the motions, but nothing was happening. By now, continues John Smith, I had started attending college. My next poem sounds as though I had finally met Jesus. Each day I turn my life to a new page and look in retrospect to yesterday with hope within my heart that some tomorrow will, will find my record filled with words unstained by sinful acts that breed a shaky pen and help men recommend themselves to hell. Each day I turn my life to a new page and pray for help in finding what to write. For though I know that time is just a place, I also know that in the hearts of men is found a place that Christ will occupy through years recorded and through years to come. Each day I turn my life to a new page and I know that God has read my dusty past. And though I stray, I'm still within his sight and loved by him as when a, I was a child he guides my hand along my forming lines and helps me build a future that will stand. Each day I turn my life to a new page that only faith and love can e'er fulfill. For empty hearts yield only impure blood that flows to selfish grounds and then runs dry. If in Christ's name we pledge our daily quests, then God's reward is ours and life is met. Now, that poem fascinates me comments John. I was hoping in the first, I was praying in the second, I was knowing in the third, and preaching in the fourth. But unfortunately, I was still as lost as ever, and I was moving from a little lost to a lot lost. 
By now I had drifted into a kind of existentialism and here's what I wrote during my later college years. Oh my God, I'm sorry that I created you rather than you creating me. I cannot share you with my fellow man because you are mine and I am me. I cannot quote you from the Bible because it has not been written. I believe in you because you are a part of me. I worship you through every word I speak, through every thought I think, through every deed I do with one long uninterrupted prayer. I cannot be seen walking in your house because I am your house and it is in me that you exist. I cannot stand away from you and observe your omnipotence because you are too close to me. I cannot sin and repent because you will not allow me to. I cannot judge my fellow man for not believing in you as I do because you are mine alone. I cannot leave you as long as I am alive and when I die, that part of me which is you will continue on forever because you are true. Oh my God, I'm glad that I created you to guide me through my life because you are true. Well, it's going from bad to worse, isn't it? By this time, John says, I no longer attended church. I was firmly entrenched in the world and its pleasures and was overflowing with pride. So that's the way it's going to be. Reason was now my God. I would worship intellectualism. By this time, I was in my middle 20s, married, had started a family, got caught up in worldly pursuits and stopped searching. I decided to embrace the church my wife was born and reared in. I took instructions, became a member, and used to enjoy telling people that I was a social member. Well, I'd rather forget my early and middle 30s. I should call them my thirsty 30s. I drank a case of 16 ounce cans of beer a week at home and went out with the boys every Friday night and did the town. And by my late 30s, I had been drinking steadily for at least 12 years and had been smoking heavily for 22. I'd been running my life for 38 years right into the ground. The word willpower wasn't in my vocabulary. I finally remembered one belief of my boyhood church. It's all right to drink and smoke as long as you practice it in moderation. What a joke. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all the kingdoms of my heart. In my heart are kingdoms of a world that's all my own. Kingdoms that are only seen by myself and God alone. In the past when I tried to rule my world, it just seemed to fall apart. So please, Jesus, be the Lord of all the kingdoms of my heart. Jesus, I surrender all. Jesus, I surrender all. Jesus, I surrender all. The kingdoms of my heart. I guess I only fooled myself, for I said I had yielded all. But in a secret corner of my heart was a kingdom that did not fall. I surrender now, make my heart your throne, rule its kingdoms great and small. For if you're not Lord of everything, then you're not Lord. Jesus be the Lord of all, Jesus be the Lord of all, Jesus be the Lord of all, 
the kingdoms of my heart, the kingdoms of my heart. Thank you, Truett. As this odyssey of John Smith comes to a close, John says the most important event in my life was now about to happen. After 38 years of trying to run my own life, I was declaring spiritual bankruptcy. I was truly desperate. I began questioning my Christian neighbors down the street. I started reading the Bible, and I began listening to a Christian radio program called Haven of Rest which my neighbors enjoyed. I remember sitting evenings listening to Haven of Rest and reading the Bible while sipping beer and puffing away. Jesus came into my heart on August 14, 1975, in a powerful way. And in the days to follow, he revealed his love to me repeatedly. Let me explain simply how it happened. Lord Jesus, I prayed. I put myself into your hands. And I didn't realize myself the power of those words when I knelt in my living room. Remove from me, dear Jesus, the desire to smoke. I know that you have the power to do anything, and that if I trust in you, you will help me. Jesus, I give myself to you. I talked with Jesus and prayed for help many times in the weeks that followed, and he never once let me down. I had trouble myself believing what was happening. I not only was no longer tempted to smoke, instead of experiencing the usual withdrawal symptoms, I felt a kind of release and freedom. Jesus had heard my cry that day, and he not only delivered me from bondage, but he gave me a new heart. He opened my spiritual eyes. He wrote my name in the book of life. He sealed me with the Holy Spirit. I was free. For the first time in my life, the chains were broken. Jesus died for me. My sins were forgiven. God loved me. I became an adopted son. I was able to see with spiritual eyes for the first time, without even asking. I was also delivered from my dependency upon alcohol. By November, God had led me to a prayer community which met weekly for prayer and praise and Bible study. I was still a babe in Christ, enjoying all the freedom possible when my body came under the worst attack I have ever remembered. I spent a whole week in my bedroom reading the Bible, listening to Christian radio, praying and sleeping. At that time, it was an important testing. Satan would never again own me. I belong to Jesus. I mentioned Christian radio. Right from the beginning of my walk with the Lord, Haven of Rest has always had a special place in my heart. I thank God for their part in my Christian growth. And thank you, Lord, for my new verse. Each day, I turn my life to a new page and thank my Lord that he now holds the pen. Sweet, sweet song.
God, our loving Heavenly Father. And so the Odyssey of John Smith has been presented to our listeners that they could share in your work through this ministry in the life of this one man. And we do not serve ourselves in showing how Haven of Rest had a part in his Christian life, his coming to the Lord Jesus Christ experiential. But I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you met him. And what we want to say today is that you will meet anyone who seeks you, Heavenly Father. I know there are hungry hearts reaching out to you. I pray now that you will meet them through Christ. Amen. Amen. 